said it a minute ago, there is a lot going on in, in Valley Sports. Uh, welcome to Talking Sports, Greg Selber, Pete Pettis. We, uh, we're hanging in there. <laughs> we're surviving. We are surviving. Uh, the spring is crazy. The fall has a lot less going on. It seems like it, you know, there's a lot, a lot of focus on football and volleyball, but man, the spring, you got everything. Exactly. And where, where do we begin? But we might as well just get into, well, this weekend, actually, we were at the UTPA homecoming. That was kind of exciting. Uh, yeah. Saw a lot of faces I hadn't seen in a while. Right. Uh, mingled. You had your little book thing going. Yeah. yeah. Um, UTPA lost, unfortunately. Um, couldn't hit a shot. They, yeah. Couldn't buy one. They were really expensive that day. Yeah. Um, the retired, the jersey retirement was a good thing. Uh, the, the number. The, they retired Lucius Jackson's number. Or they raised it to the ceiling. Uh, huge crowd, 4,000 on hand. Really fun atmosphere. I mean, that's the first time in a while I've seen a big crowd in the field it was, house. It was really great to see that crowd in the field house. Like you said, the first time in a really long time. I remember as a kid it was packed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was something that was... Um, they're 13 and 14, and they got a couple of games left. The tournament is uh, March 14, 15, 16. They've still got a pretty good chance. They're going to have to finish with a couple of wins, but it's a pretty good season so far. It's nothing to be ashamed of, definitely. Um, so. And, you know, to see all those old players, I mean, Fred Taylor was there, Luke Jackson was there, uh, even newer guys, Lalo Rios was there. I mean, it, it was fun. The book signing went well. We sold out of the first run, which is a good lick for me and for the university. Uh, bottom line is, the atmosphere at homecoming uh, was something that you know the administration is proud of because it looked like College City, man. Yeah, really people did. everywhere yeah, really having a good yeah. time. Two guys that were on stilts. You see those guys yeah. on stilts? Yeah, that was kind of creepy, but it was kind of neat. The only thing I did, man, I've been bummed about it for the last couple of days. I got told a great story, and then uh, it wasn't confirmed by Luce Jackson, but it's oh, I know, yeah, we were checking yeah, out all the things we I heard. Was, this I was that. really excited, but that's not a here. Is he point. big or what? Yeah, he's huge. Six nine, two forty five. Yeah. He listen, man. He still looks like he could score about twelve a game. I mean. Just very imposing, and he, it, it, it was neat to see all those guys. I'll never forget it. It was a fun weekend. Yeah, I'm a little tired, good. but yeah, yeah, it was good. It was good. Well, let's jump right into it. Boys basketball 30. What's going down, Greg? Boys basketball tonight. By the time you hear this, the we'll games be the will be yeah, we'll be on the road. The games will be in action. I'm going to go see Edinburgh North and Rio Grande City. Uh, they've got a very, very winnable by district game against United South. Now, here's the deal. Winning district does get you a number four seed. But there's no guarantee, as we're going to talk about, that it gets you a home game. I've always been of the opinion that it used to be this way in the day. You know, if you win the district, you should get a by district home. Well, game. why shouldn't you exactly? I mean, you've accomplished all. It's bro, went undefeated. bro went undefeated. That's they, right. Now they got to go to Los They've got to go to Los Fresnos. Well, yeah. Well, and we'll get there in a minute because that's that's not the easiest first round game there was. Now North was looking good. United South is okay. You know, they've beaten some teams. They beat some Valley teams. Uh, Edinburgh High, same night. They're playing up in Alice. Uh, who are they playing? United? Yeah. Well, you know, United is a team that Edinburgh should know well because they played them four times the last seven years in the playoffs. They, they, I think they split with them. Uh, United is not as good as they were last year. Those teams ended up tied, right? Yeah. It was United, Alexander, and Del Rio, 10-2, and two, a three-way tie, and then they flipped the coin flips. There are no more playing games on the 5A level, apparently. It's a tough game for the Bobcats, but I like that senior crew. I know they don't want to be finished. Absolutely, man. I think they're going to find a way to beat United. I nice. really do. Yeah, right on. Now, who does Sherryland have? Sherryland has Laredo Alexander. Again, Alexander is one of the best programs in that area and the region. I feel like Sherryland has a chance to take them out. You know, the last couple of years they've had their troubles in by district. But I feel like that team is, is I wouldn't want to play them because they come at you from a lot of different angles. Uh, Alexander, on the other hand, they've got their usual array of good athletes, but I don't know. It's not like it's not. It's not like it's not a winnable game. Like exactly. Triple negative. Exactly. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not sure. We'll see. Memorial Harland. Memorial Harland. That's, good. that's a good game. That is going to be a good game. Uh, that's Tuesday tonight. Like we were saying, is Rolos Fresnos. Oh, it's Monday. Okay, yeah. let's we'll stick with the Monday game. Yeah, and go to tonight is Rolos Fresnos. Rose been hot. Yeah. There is no denying that everybody knows who Rose is, and that they're young, young and they they win. Uh, they got to watch out for those wrestlers like we were talking about. That road game that they have to do, I mean, just in general, I mean, road games are always more difficult because you got a home crowd you got to go up against. Yeah. And that's that's what it boils down to from time to time. For Los Fresnos, man, you couldn't be any happier. I know you're playing the best team in the Valley yeah. probably, but they've got a good team. They beat Porter, they beat uh, Harlingen, they, 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 they're a competitive team. They've got some size, too. They're extremely competitive for being yeah. the fourth seed. 
Yeah, it's one of the best four seeds yeah. I've seen in a long time. Yeah. They're not a great shooting team, but they've got some size and they've got some depth, and Rose going to have to hustle one, but I think they do. And they usually have like three or four guys that get double figures. Yeah, they do. Yeah, But so does Rose. So does Rose. Oh, yeah. we're getting so Rose got 12 guys, yeah. man. God, so man. does Rose. So does Rose. The pressure's on Rose, though. I hate it to really say is. that. I'm not trying it really to... Is. No, it really is. Because you've got a road game against a pretty good team, and everybody expects you to go deep in the playoffs. So, um, yeah, everybody expects you to get to Pan Am. That's right. Yeah. And so it starts here. You just got to play the way you know how to play, and sooner or later you hit some shots. It's going to happen. I think they're going to win. Memorial at Harlingen. That's a great game. Yeah. Uh, Papito, like we've been saying all year, he's going to need at least 20. Have you looked at his stats lately? They're they're unbelievable. 80% free throws, 219 assists, 100 steals. I mean, the guy, he's 44% from three point range. That's where Memorial is going to win if they win. They're, they're not going to outscore Harlingen because the Cardinals average 71 points yeah. a game. Row, uh, a Memorial not but 57. Yeah. So pace is going to be the key. You know, Cam Memorial will slow it down, work the ball, hit the perimeter shot. Exactly, because they're going to have to because Harlingen is very quick. Oh, man. And they, they'll make that quick. So what they need, I think Memorial needs to get Pablo and um, Pablo involved. Yeah, he's, he's got to have a big they, game. They need to get the, dap, the game down there by yeah. the rim involved. If Adame gets 15 and 10, they win. Yeah. You know, not to say that he's you know, going to make or break, but uh, because Harlington, and he, he got a big kid, Matthew Cervantes, in the middle, who's very active, a good passer. He, he gets in the lanes and makes a lot of steals. And, of course, Gilbert Resto, he's averaging 23 a game. That's another, he's 87% yeah. on the line. Yeah. Him and Papito, that's a great matchup. Those are really two is. quick, really very good players. I expect them both to be first team all day. Yeah. And then Porter at San Diego, we, that's... You always have one game where you say, well, this team's going to kill this yeah. team. And they might. Porter might kill San Benito. But, but the Greyhounds are scrappy, man. They are, you know, I mean, they, they are, and, you know, we don't see them that much because it's in that side of the valley. That yeah. They're still in this district, but they are scrappy. They made the playoffs. Made and the anybody playoffs. can win wants to get there. Porter's got 30 wins. I think they have the most wins of any Valley team. They're probably the most experienced Valley team. they got five guys who have been together for three years, two, three years. Um, I'm looking for them to come out that bracket, really. Yeah. And it, it begins with San Benito. Uh, San Benito's going to have to have a great game to stay with them. I don't think they will, but again, who, how, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? But I've had a feeling about Porter. They won the BISD. Yeah. They won the Diamondback. They've been good all season. Uh, this is where it starts for Porter. I really feel like at the end of the day, we're going to be talking about either Porter or Rowe in that third round. Yeah. And then the, the final game, uh, PSJ North against Harlington South. Another one, PSJ North, you know, they, they didn't sneak in. They've been in the race the whole way. Yeah. Scrappy team, seniors, Mike Casillas is a good rebounder. Uh, De Leon they got over there. They got some players. Yeah, uh, but Harlingen South has um, <laughs> Nick. Angel. Angel, they got a good team, man. Yeah, they, I mean, what a district. Angel has a lot of three-pointers. Yeah, he does. Yeah. They'll hit some threes. It's a little different from the South teams we're used to seeing in the past were tall trees. Uh, they're not as big as they have been in the past, but they're probably more, uh, they're quicker. Uh, they're great shooters. PSJ North is going to, again, pace will be the key. Exactly. So PSJ North wants to slow you down and play in the 40s. South can do that. Yep. South can do that. Uh, they're going to hit their shots. That's what PSJ North hasn't done in the games they've lost. They have not hit the jumper. So if they can hit some outside shots and take a lead, then they'll start to take air out of the ball, and they make you crazy because they don't give you the ball. Yeah. <laughs> right? There's no shot clock in high school. Yeah. Really, I think, yeah, no, that really needs to be changed it's quick. Yeah, 45 I mean, seconds. Yeah, that'd be all right, you know. Not 24, because then you just have another people throwing up. Maybe, at maybe 40, I don't know. Um, it's 35 in college. Yeah, 35 right? in college, so uh, maybe 40. An idea whose time has come, maybe we'll discuss that at a yeah. later date. So, real quick, Edinburgh North and United South. North, you know, you're a district champ, you know, you played well, you just can't come out and lay an egg. And I don't exactly. think they will. I think this team has too much guts. I think they're. They're very seasoned. I, I expect them to win that ball game. And then if they win that, they play the Memorial Harlingen win. Yeah. And that that uh, if it's Harlingen, if it's Memorial, either way, that's a tough second round game. Really, tough. it really is. And so does Rose got a, just a tough win to second round. Also, either Laredo, Alexander, or Sherry Lane. I think uh, I don't know why I have this feeling that David Keith and them are going to upset Sherry uh, Alexander. I don't know why. I know they're underdogs, but. We'll see what happens. I feel like the boys are going to do well. Yeah. The girls are almost done, yeah. unfortunately. That, that happened fast. Yeah, I really did. Uh, they just, well, what can you say? I mean, yeah. there's but some, the boys are starting out. So. The boys are starting out, and so that gives us something to be happy about. Uh, as far as the girls, I saw Harlington against the EHS last week, and uh, it happens every now and then. Evenly matched teams, one doesn't show up. I mean, Harlington, they just stomped Edinburgh into the dust, and that was really surprising. See, I hurt for those seniors on that team because they had a great season and I feel like if they played them 10 times, you know, they would be competitive. I feel like they went fine. Yeah. It was just that one game where nothing went in 
They couldn't even get the ball up for it. They couldn't even catch the ball. I, I really was surprised to see that. Harlan's on a roll. Man. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And they play Los Fresnos, who is missing their best player. How long can they continue to, to gut it up without that kid, Ebanks? Yeah. Okay, how I think this is where the end of the line is. I think, unfortunately, I hate to say, I think it's the end of the line for Westville too. Yeah, I was about to say. I mean, Westville's probably in the same, in the same boat with you know, with their big out, you know. And uh, how, did, how does that? What a crummy year, man. The fates have not been kind to us. And the two best teams had their kids get hurt. Or they would be going on to yeah. the third round. I feel it. You know? Yeah, they would. Well, well, we'll see what happens. I mean, this weekend. Yeah. Hope springs eternal. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, you know, emotion carries you a certain part of the way, and coaching. But once you get to a certain level, they're going to need that kid, and she ain't playing. Van Tilburg and, and Tejada, I feel sorry for them, and I just hope that they're able to deal with the fact that this happened to them, because it's no good. Yeah, it's not. Maybe they can get something, you know, get the magic or something, play behind. Uh, Via Real for yeah. Westlaco, 26 points. Sophomore, she's going to be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And Jazz Garza, I mean, they got players. Yeah, though. yeah, they do, but I mean, you're, yeah. that big was made a really big difference. Indeed, yeah. she's a heck of a player. Luckily, she's back. Yeah. 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 So, well, soccer... Soccer is good. Let me turn the page of my chart here. You've got some things you want to talk about in your district. Yeah. The big one here, I guess, is PSJ Memorial and McAllen, right? Yeah. And the boys. Yeah. They're both good teams. McAllen, oh, uh, Sandoval. Guillermo Sandoval. That was the guy whose name last week I told you, Guillermo Blank. Well, Sandoval. Him and George Garcia. This other kid, Brandon uh, Ronhell. Multiple goal scorers for McAllen, man. They got, they got the most explosive offense around. They score a lot of goals. Yeah, and that district is... It's All good. Tied up. <laughs> I mean, With PSJ North, nobody saw that coming, I don't think. I knew they were going to be decent, but they're 21 points right now. That's yeah. amazing. McAllen is second, and PSJ Memorial is third. So and, that second and, and third is big. Got, and they got PSJ Memorial and McAllen play this weekend. So That's going to be great. It really is. Where, so, they, where are they at now? Where they're they they're playing at McAllen. Okay, you so, got to like that. Uh, PSJ Memorial, man, they're scrappy. They're, they'll hit you. I mean, they're, they're, they're a very physical team. They're quick. They, uh, they, they, they're they going to be tough. Yeah, they did. Uh, and at PSJ North, they, they, they did a really good job against Memorial. You know, um, yeah. the top scorer, Margarito Capio, he had two goals. Yeah. And then the one that impressed me, though, was this Osvaldo Puente. Yeah. He had all three assists wow. for those goals. Yeah, That's the hardest thing to do. You know, to me, the hardest thing to do in soccer is set the play up. Because it happens so fast, you know, once the ball comes, you got to you got like one second to do it. There's not a lot of yeah, and then what? You see, like I go back and forth with the sport, but then when they when you see that play come together and it really just happens, you're just like, yeah, that's that's cool. Half the get half the goals that are scored come off the set pieces, yeah. free kicks and corner kicks. But when you see somebody come from the midfield and set a play up and there's passing involved, kind of like with the Brownsville schools. It's impressive. Yeah. I mean, and it, you know, once you learn the game and, and once you see how it happens, like you say, yeah. it's pretty cool. Yeah, man. it really is. And then you see the pros and you're just like, wow, I can't believe <laughs> yeah. They're amazing. Yeah. All right, so that's a good district. Uh, on the boys' side, Lincoln's still holding serve at, at number one. Edinburgh, Sherryland, Economy is down. This is Donna's big week uh, because they got Lincoln and EHS. So they're a team that everybody touted of having some athletes. Very, they're another team that'll bang you around. Yeah. If you don't come to play against Donna, man, they'll bruise you. So they're running fifth right now. If they can win both of those games, up they go to near the top of the stand. I was. You think any of these teams can take Lincoln down? Yeah, I think it's doable. Yeah, yeah, I think it's doable. Uh, I like to see what Sherland does the second yeah, time you around. You don't think they've just ran ran out the district yet? No, no. I really feel like I, I like Lincoln. Yeah, I like I've seen them a couple of times, but I feel like. Don't count Sherryland out. This well, yeah, so yeah, yeah, man. You know, give me a break. Yeah. So I feel like they got a chance at them. Look, when they're going to be these plays, their game, they can beat anybody. Yeah. They have not the last two weeks. Uh, it's been a little tricky for them. They haven't played well. Uh, they lost that damn penalty kicks to EHS, which is an amazing, fun thing. I wrote this week yeah. about the, the 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 idea of the penalty kick and what it's like and what it because it's really crazy. The fans come that's out and get on. I mean, the field that's, that's really fun. Penalty oh kicks. yeah, man, sudden death. So. Uh, yeah, I, I still think that district is undecided. EHS, man, nobody really wants to say that they have a chance to win district for some reason, but I feel like they do. They're right there. They got the big the three, man. Back, yeah. And the thing is, they got those three great kids, Hinojosa and Cristal Martinez and, and, and Sergio Romo, but they've got some other guys uh, that, are, that are starting to come up, man. Uh, Gallardos, Alan and Alan. Both of those kids are playing great. So I think that they have a chance. It's a great district. It's yeah. the best district, yeah. the best boys yeah. district. Definitely, definitely. To me. Not maybe best. Top to bottom, talent-wise, but most competitive. Yeah, definitely. It's kind of shaping up to what 31 was with football. Exactly. Yeah. Now, on the girls' side, Sherryland, very, very resolutely, very business-like. You know, they got, what, 21 points. They got six-point lead. Here's the stat. 22-2. to two. 
That is the, 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 the margin, their goal differential is 20, and that's just amazing because Sherilyn, Donna scored once, yeah. they kind of made he scored once. Other than that, they shut you out. Yeah. And they scored, Daniela Cantu is a great player. They got five or six kids who can put it in the net. They're looking like they're going to win that district right now. Economy is in the Lincoln tie for a second. Yeah. Then they do the same way 16 4, 15 5, you know? Um, yeah. It looks good. I mean, I would put them. When do they play again? Uh, economy is in Lincoln's going to be a while because they just yeah. got through they last got week. So it'll be late so. in the second half. I'll tell you this much, we got good soccer down here, and, and in the back of my mind I'm thinking that which one of these kids has the size and the grades to play at Pan Am? Because that's what we're looking for yeah, down the road, it's been going back to Pan Am. Yeah, yeah, and not only that, there's the endowment that was set up by but um, Yeah, yeah but we'll, yeah, we'll outstanding, man. And, you know, that's the type of thing that makes me love this place even more, is that we really get behind our athletics, we get behind our academics. I mean, two hundred seventy-five thousand bucks. Yeah, that's not a chunk. That's was, a chunk of change. It was, it was a nice check to see. You know, yeah. it's rare you see the ones with six digits. Right. Usually, yeah. it's like a ten thousand from the uh, you know the humane society. Yeah. <laughs> We're raising some money. I think weekends like the past weekend allow people to see that that you know we're spending that money in the right way we're making first class stuff i mean yeah i know it was really good we saw that recruit here also you know going back ah yes yeah, right we're here you know we're talking to ryan marks he brought a kid in from chicago big kid six five six yeah. six yeah. Uh, they're gonna have to recruit because yeah. the four seniors are leaving i hate to say that it's gonna be kind of tricky but that's all right so soccer's looking good uh basketball is great playoff time nothing like it what else what's next you got a little bit about softball i do i do okay. Over the weekend, Mac Allen won Row Zero. They won the club championship at the Mission Fast Pitch. Uh, Mac they each had an all-tournament player. Lauren Gasha from Row, who's very, 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 very good. Yeah. I've seen her. And Zabana Sanchez yeah. from Mac Allen. I feel like she's one of the best players too. Now Edinburgh North started out, you know, number one yeah. team. Started out great. They ended up losing one to nothing to San Benito. Their old rival. Those guys, those two teams, they yeah, battled they, each other like crazy. Yeah. yeah. But then they rallied uh, four to two over Porter, another great old rival of Edinburgh North in the day to win third place of that tournament. Uh, the interesting point, you can always count on uh, Vanessa Salazar, yeah. great shortstop uh, for Edinburgh North. Uh, Melina Sanchez is an unbelievable catcher, has a bullet uh, rifle arm, she's amazing. They've got the players, they've got the seniors, and they got Faith Escobar who was amazing. But Rihanna Garces on this all-tournament team, little junior outfielder, uh, great personality, she's always getting fired up, she's a funny girl. She can play. All tournament at Mission Fast Pitch, that is nothing to be sneezed at. So if a couple of those girls that were considered second line or, you know, second echelon can continue to play like that, they're going to be impossible to beat. And I don't think, you know, one nothing loss to somebody. I know they're probably mad, but well, they're going to be fine. Yeah, they they're going to be I real mean, fine. It's obviously, it's not district, but it, they should be fine. I mean, they, they. I remember those matchups when I was covering that district oh, for, man. for the playoffs. That was San Benito and yeah. Porter. Porter's not as good as it used to be. But San Benito, apparently, and you know, they lost a lot of seniors, but I guess they're pretty darn good. I watched uh, I watched Lauren Pitch. She's she's great, really good, yeah. um, competitor. And not only a competitor, she kept herself composed, mm -hmm. and that was and she's not she's a junior. It, yeah, yeah, and that's how it works. You know, when what are you gonna do when something bad happens? Because it's gonna happen during every yeah, game. Because something bad happened. You walk she, somebody. She gave up. She gave up runs. And, you know, all of a sudden the bases are loaded off a walk, and what happens next? Boom, strikeout. Mm -hmm. And that's what. That's what impressed me the most. Which about. way will you go? Yeah. You know, the, the, the character of a kid is hard to tell because they're so young. But you like those guys who can recover from something that went eh and just mow them down. And of course, you know, Mac Allen, very quietly. I mean, that's a very solid top yeah. team. They are, they are. And uh, they're rebuilding here. Yeah, it's supposed to be a rebuilding here. They win, they win third yeah. or this uh, club championship, yeah. which is that second yeah. level of the tournament. Hey, man. I like the way softball does it. It's not one of these, you know, PC, everybody gets a ribbon. They put you in the level that they think you can perform, and that's it. I mean, you know, that's the great thing about sports most of the time is that there's none of this, uh, everybody gets a trophy, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, and baseball, tonight, it's windy, it's a horrible day for baseball, but it doesn't matter because they love it. Yeah. District games? Yeah. They haven't even had scrimmages barely. I mean, I don't like this 19 district. I don't want to go off on that again, but man, you know, to play right now for a district, it's like, boy, you don't even know where the, the water cooler is, and all of a sudden you're 1 0 or 0 and 1. Yeah. Yeah, scary, so. scary indeed. So what else? Uh, track. track, track, track was fun. You have a. I got, I got you went to the start. I got, I got over to the start relays. Uh, got there a little bit late. We were on deadline or whatever. But uh, I did uh, get to watch Maddie uh, Kaufman jump. Uh, she she did eleven three. She tried for eleven six, yeah. but missed barely missed it. She tried three times and barely missed it. And, wow. Uh, you know, I love to watch those jumps because it's the process, the build up. You know. You, you see them warming up between jumps, and they're looking at the other people, and they're kind of getting beady eyed. Ah, it's exciting. Yeah, it really is. And uh, the only problem, well, like, for the media standpoint, for me, uh, 
it was into the sun, so it was getting kind of hard to photograph her sometimes. But she's uh, she's excited. They got the McAllen meet coming up. Uh, she she wants to tear through all that. I mean, man, she can get twelve, man. We're looking at going to stage, yeah, or close, yeah. or at least yeah. past the regions. You know, uh, Sam's relays was good. I didn't get to go, but I read about it. Edinburgh North girls again, tied for first. They're point scorers. No superstars, but they're point scorers. I feel like they're going to be tough. Now, coming up this weekend, the Cats relays, uh, but it's not at Edinburgh Cats Stadium. It's going to be over at PSJ because the stadium's still being worked on. I feel like that's going to be a great meet. Finally starting to get a sense of who in the city teams and the surrounding areas exactly. are going to make it out. Sherryland was amazing. I was, about to, say, I was about to say that. Sherryland just... 200 by points, 200 boys and girls. 75 to 79. That's, that's just not fair, man. Right? And then 210 to 132. It's a little closer on the girls, but. What do you think makes them so good? Because every year they're in and out. The I, I was watching them, and they they look like athletes. And this is nothing against anybody else. That the other people just look like regular people. Yeah, yeah they're very uh, organized. Yeah, like you, people like you would see, oh, I think I'd see you at a college event, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you'd be like, not D1 per se, but... Moving on. Yeah, against a, like a high school team, you're just like... Yeah. But, you know, through the gaps, like I, like Maddie Coffin, for example, she... There are kids from other schools. Exactly. But right now, that's the top program because they're super regimented, organized, they're sharp. I mean, they like you said, they just look like winners. And plus, I mean, they got talent, yeah. So... Uh, who in the world is going to be able to make a dent in those two team standings in 35A? Remains to be seen. Palmview's not bad. Yeah, no, Palmview is not bad. I mean, got some just granted, <laughs> granted the the margin look was by 200, yeah, but it's hard to do in a track. Yeah, game. but 14 out of 17. They, they did have they did have some some good outings, you know, and we'll just see what happens. Track meets yeah. good. I, it's not like the rest of the teams are playing for second. But they're playing for a second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although, again, hear me, Edinburgh North girls. Just remember that that I said that it's not a done deal that they won't win that district because yeah. they're just they're just consistent point scores. And everywhere you look, they got a couple of kids, third, fifth, sixth, maybe a first. They're not bad. It's good. Mm -hmm. It's good. I think we pretty much covered enough for this week. Uh, well, we got we got our basketball. We got, our, we got it all in. We got our softball, baseball, Pan Am. We haven't done any football. Oh man. Is there anything going on in football right now? Uh, the draft's coming up. The draft is coming up. <laughs> it won't be that long before yeah. we start the rumblings of spring football. Spring football. Uh, you know what? Actually, I got a football. Uh, I see it all. <laughs> I, did it. I ran uh, at the uh, softball game that I went to. I ran into uh, the Mac Lai coach. No, ah, yeah. the Mac. Yeah, he's big. Yeah, he is big. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Don't argue yeah. with him. I don't care what he's like. I was he's like, big. hey, how's it going? I introduced myself or right. whatever, and you know, he was like, oh yeah, I'll be looking out. So yeah, the spring game should be fun. Brewer. Yeah. That's his name. Kevin Brewer. Well, you know, we'll, we'll obviously get there down the road, but it's going to be an interesting season. A lot of new coaches, yeah. a lot of changes, man. But that, hey, it's the nature of the beast. Everybody who gets into the business knows that you can be a champion one minute and you're out the next. It's just, hey, that's why they get paid a lot of money and get a lot of publicity. Yeah. Because it all rests on their shoulders. Well, next week when we come back, we're going to talk about all these playoff results from the boys. We'll probably have a second game to discuss over the weekend that happened. Uh, and again, once again, you know, if you... Uh, like the show and you see some things that you're doing that we like, give us a shout. We're trying to mention as many names and kids as possible. Hey, you know, 20 or 30 years from now when the kid's sitting there and, you know, we've got two mortgages and five kids and this and that, he'll be able to say, you know, remember that time when I <laughs> scored three touchdowns against La Jolla? I mean, you know, bottom line. And it'll still be on record because it's, <laughs> it's on YouTube. So it's yeah. great. Yeah. The world is now yeah. on YouTube. It's exciting. <laughs> very second level stuff. Whatever. All right. Greg Selber, Pete Pettis, go to the track meets, see some basketball games tonight. Uh, the playoffs start, and the boys, who can we get that goes to Pan Am? Yeah. Bottom line, we're done. Until next week.